Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa held a meeting today at Gadebia Palace with His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa, where they discussed a number of local topics. His Majesty the King hit the achievements of Bahrain in various fields, thanks to the efforts of its citizens, which established and promoted its leading and global position in various international forums, in addition to enhancing the Kingdom's competitive position and achieving development goals to meet the aspirations of the Bahrain Economic Vision 2030. His Majesty affirmed the importance of continuing to build on the achievements and gains to serve the country and citizens. His Majesty the King also commended the efforts of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince in serving the Kingdom, as well as the keenness to adopt plans and strategies that keep pace with development and aim to improve performance levels in government institutions and agencies. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, today announced that the 2019 Government Forum will be held in the patronage of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, on Sunday the 6th of October. Since its inception, the Government Forum has provided an important platform for reviewing and developing the necessary public policies in order to continue delivering the Kingdom's sustainable comprehensive development under the leadership of His Majesty, King Hamad. This year's forum will review government delivery and address critical areas related to the Kingdom's growth, including public sector productivity and diversification efforts, designed to turn challenges into opportunities. The forum continues to reflect the government's unwavering commitment to increasing efficiency to achieve the Kingdom's strategic goals and provide the best services to its citizens, in line with the 2019-2022 government programme and the principles of sustainability, competitiveness and fairness, which are underpinned by the Bahrain's Economic Vision 2030. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs and President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met with the ruler's representative of Abu Dhabi in Al Dhafa region, His Highness Sheikh Hamad bin Zayed Al Nayan, and expressed his deep condolences for the passing of Suhail bin Mubarak al Kitbi. His Highness Sheikh Nasser also conveyed the condolences of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, a Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad al Khalifa, to the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces. His Highness also paid a visit to Her Highness Sheikh Fatima bin Mubarak, the mother of the UAE, to express his condolences. His Highness Sheikh Hamdan asked His Highness Sheikh Nasser to convey his thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for their noble sentiments and wish the Kingdom of Bahrain further progress and prosperity. The first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sport and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, cried the winners of the Khalid bin Hamad Futsal Tournament for Youth Centres, National Clubs and Companies in its seventh edition, which was organised by the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs, held at Khalifa Sports City, in the presence of Minister Ayman Al Mawayed. His Highness Sheikh Khalid praised the development of the youth and sports sector in the Kingdom, which is thanks to the continuous support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He added that since the launch of the tournament, all goals were set in line with the royal vision of His Majesty the King that aimed to enhance the sector, attract the youth and strengthen their skills, which led to achieving many accomplishments for the Kingdom. His Highness also expressed appreciation for the support of the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs and President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, who always stresses the importance of holding such events. He affirmed his keenness to always come up with different initiatives that contribute in enhancing the capabilities of Bahraini youth. 
He praised the wide participation of the futsal tournament witnesses, which affirm its success, all thanks to the support of the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs and its keenness to ensure the success of the tournament. He also praised the efforts of the organising committee and the national cadres and the contribution to the success of the event. His Highness then praised the efforts of the participants and praised the high performance and also hailed the high spirits which resulted in a great competition and commitment. The Minister of Education, Dr Maja Andoemi, patronised an international workshop on enhancing the abilities in the field of international internet governance in coordination with the UNESCO and in cooperation with the International Federation for Telecommunications at the Arab Regional Office in Cairo. The workshop was participated in by representatives from 18 countries, as well as the presence of UN coordinator Amina al shakawi and the CEO of the Information and E-Government Authority, Mohamed al Qaid. Anuami praised the efforts of the Regional Centre for Information Technology and Telecommunications for organising this workshop, which represents an opportunity to exchange expertise and discuss various issues and how to solve them. He stressed the need for collective issues and wider partnership to achieve the governance. He added that the Kingdom has always been keen on merging information technology and telecommunications with education, thanks to directors of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, including the Future Schools Project in 2005 and Digital Empowerment. Amin al Shakawi congratulated the Kingdom on marking the centenary of education and praised its efforts in achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. He expressed his desire to up and open up wider horizons for cooperation with the Ministry of Education in the field of information technology and telecommunications. I think the RCICT, the Regional Centre on Information and Communication Technology, is a very important uh, institution because uh, in view of the importance of um, digital technologies and internet in Bahrain, it is important to raise awareness about the uh, use of the technologies. It's important to build capacities and skills like we are doing in this workshop here. A workshop like this gives a chance to bring together lots of different participants from different sectors, from the public sector, some from the private sector, from the technical community, to just basically discuss what some of the issues are and get a better idea of some of the solutions and ideas that people have about internet governance. So internet governance basically refers to all of the challenges that the proliferation of the internet has actually raised for us. How do we actually manage the growth of the internet? How do we ensure that everyone is connected? How do we ensure this is done fairly? Um, so there are a lot of different kinds of issues, both for the government, but also for operators and also for individuals. Um, and trying to come together and talk about the solutions to those is what a workshop like this is for. There are many questions which are related to how do we handle that data. Uh, one is uh, what could be the economic benefits of the digital commerce, digital education and all of that. The other one is uh, how do we protect the data, whether it's the sensitive data of the government or data that are controlling uh, major systems, factories and so on. We don't want these 
processes to be interrupted um, or whether it's about the privacy and data protection it could be also about intellectual property there a lot of this information should be in one way or another protected